My name is Samantha Attard. I'm a wellness coach, uh, yoga instructor, nutrition PhD, living in Washington, D.C. Um, I am here to help you live your best life, your happiest, healthiest life, so that you have energy and enthusiasm for your family and careers and communities. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about meal planning and meal um, tips. So I know so many of my clients, when I start talking to them about um, meal planning, they're just kind of pretty overwhelmed because um, it takes a lot of work and they just don't even know where to begin. Um, so if anyone else has felt like that, definitely throw a hand out there. I know the first time that I thought about trying to meal plan, I was a little bit overwhelmed because um, it sounds really scary and you're like, I don't know what to make dinner for dinner tonight. How am I going to know what to make in three days um, and how am I going to really get this figured out? So we are going to um, try to make this whole process a lot less stressful and more Wonderful. This isn't necessarily about cooking like big amounts, but just meal planning um, in general for your week. So first thing that I do um, and first thing I recommend for everyone that's meal planning is to start just making a list of the foods that you like and the meals that have worked. So especially if you're cooking for a family, this is a really great thing because maybe you made tacos like three weeks ago and everyone loved them or you know waffles was like a super big win or you have a chili cornbread recipe that everyone loves. Start just writing down those meals. Um, don't worry about when you're gonna make them any of this. Just spend a couple weeks doing what you're still doing but just writing down the meals that taste really good or thinking back Back to all the meals that your family has really enjoyed because what you want to really do is actually have a list in front of you of a library of recipes um, that actually really work that actually tasted really good that made everyone happy that felt good in your body that weren't wasn't a big um, pain in the butt to make a lot of the problem with meal planning can come when we start trying to like look up tons of recipes and then this recipe takes too long this recipe we don't have enough ingredients for blah 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 instead we want to um, start with a bunch of recipes that have already worked. Recipes that um, have ingredients that we're already buying and that actually taste good. So first thing I recommend doing, don't even worry about meal planning, but just actually write down all the meals that you have. When I first did this, I think this was about two years ago that I did this when I was first thinking about meal planning, I ended up with this huge list that I didn't even realize. I actually ended up, I want to say probably 20 to 30 um, 20 to 30 different um, meals that actually tasted really good and that I could think of, of of making and would be really happy to be eating on a regular basis. I know, it was nuts when I first thought about it, but then I was like, actually, that's all we need to do is actually remember all of the amazing things that we've made. Because over the last year, two years, five years, you have made recipes. You have made things that made people go, wow. Um, for example, this kale salad um, that I shared on Snapchat a couple days ago and we have been making constantly ever since. This is one that I don't want to forget. I want to keep on making this because it tastes so good. Everyone loves it so much and it takes approximately 10 minutes to put together. Um, I don't want to forget that. So start writing those things down. Start having that list of recipes that really work for you because that's going to be really, really awesome. The next thing, this is always an important thing to have, is to kind of know when your grocery shopping happens. So if you do have a usual date with yourself, um, maybe you always go Saturday mornings or you always go Tuesday evenings, first off, know when that happens, when the new fresh groceries come in. So if you don't have a regular time that you go to the grocery store, um, it might be worth it to make one. Really put it in your calendar, set aside the hour, the hour and a half, whatever has to happen. Get a regular time to go to the grocery store. The next thing that you're going to do is then actually look at, um, set a time maybe about like the day before you go grocery shopping or whenever you have time, but usually works to do the day before you go grocery shopping and actually check in on you and your family's schedule for the week. The first thing you actually want to do is count up how many meals you have to make. A lot of the times we end up at the grocery store and we're like, well, I should buy three pounds of chicken and two bags of lettuce and three things of kale and you know this many carrots. Um, and then we end up not actually eating at home all that week because we were running around and had tons of things going on. And that's when you have a bunch of food waste, which is something that we do not want to be having because it's frustrating, it's wasteful, it's a waste of money, a waste of resources, um, and kind of gross because then you just have stuff going old in your fridge. Don't want that. On the same token, you also don't want to run out of food and end up eating out simply because you ran out of food. So. 
the next thing I recommend is to actually look at your calendar and count up how many meals you actually are gonna be making that week. So you wanna check how many dinners am I making, how many lunches do I need, what do I actually need to prep up for this week. Okay, so we had three steps so far for your meal planning. So first, making your catalog of recipes. Second, setting your time to go to the grocery store. And then third, you are going to actually count up how many meals you are making, how much food you need to make that week. Next thing that you're gonna do is now start to fill in those meals with the recipes from your catalog. So now you know you are cooking three times that week and one of the times you need something that you can cook really fast and you're also cooking on a Sunday and you have a lot of time. So this is really great because now you know that when you go to your catalog of recipes, you need to find one thing that's going to be really quick and easy for you to make and then one thing that might take a little bit longer, take a little bit longer prep, but you have the time to make it. So you wanna be able to then start to understand how much time you have to actually make these foods and, um, and how many you actually need. So cataloging, regular grocery shopping time, and then count the number of meals you need to make. Add to that that then you say, you go back to your recipe list and actually start to fill in those recipes particularly thinking about the time that you have to make them, um, you know, maybe seasonality plays into it a bit, you know, what you can actually find at the grocery store. And then basically you'll have a set of meals that you can make for all of these different times. And then you can make your grocery list from there. Now the other beautiful thing about this is that you can be really smart when you're doing a little bit of this meal planning. You can use it to your advantage because you can see you know what, oh, you know what, I was gonna make carrot soup on Tuesday, so if I buy two pounds of carrots, I should also make that kale salad that has the carrots in it on Thursday. So you can start to use your leftovers and, and, um, and make sure that you're not just like buying, you know, one, a whole big stock of celery just to use one stock. You can make sure that you actually are going to be sharing them between some of your meals. So it really helps with your food waste and again, ultimately saves you so much money and time because you can also do some of your prep for meals together. So that's another beautiful thing is that if you know what you're gonna be making and when, you can then maybe cut up all of your celery on Sunday and use some of it on Tuesday or something like that. So this last um, or next step is to actually fill in your meals um, based on how many you need to have with the different recipes from your recipe catalog. If you have some holes, some gaps in your meal plan, maybe you do go look um, online and find a recipe for one day knowing that you're gonna need something to do with some extra chicken or with some extra carrots. Um, and you can then now look for a recipe uh, with much more clarity around how much time you have to cook, um, again, what time of year it is, how long you have to cook, and then also like what are the ingredients in the actual meal that you're prepping. So all together, you end up with a picture where it went from super overwhelming, what the heck am I gonna make, to a system where you know what you're gonna make, when you're gonna go grocery shopping, and, and what you're gonna be cooking on what day, knowing that you actually have the time to make these dishes on the specific nights that you're choosing. From there, you are ready to go and you have no longer have the problem of what am I gonna make for dinner and instead can just go to the list, cook what you're gonna cook, eat a delicious meal, hopefully make some leftovers for the next night or for the next um, day's lunch and then you should be good to go. So those are my tips for meal planning. I'd love to take any questions you guys have about meal planning. I'd love to hear what you guys think, um, especially some of those that do some beginning meal planning, if this hits home, if uh, there's some other tips or questions that you have about it. When I am thinking about how I do my meals, um, I don't necessarily specifically plan each dinner. That's, uh, I live alone, I, I don't necessarily need to do that at this point, but I do have certain foods that I always prep um, in the week ahead. So on Sunday, I'll make a huge batch of beans. Um, I will roast a couple of sweet potatoes. I will cut up probably two or three zucchini, two or three um, uh, carrots, um, whatever vegetables I could find at the farmer's market and I roast a bunch of them. Um, and so I, and then I also prep up some breakfast so I make a nice oatmeal um, or amaranth and quinoa porridge. So I'll start making that the night before. I'll also um, hard boil a bunch of eggs. So I kind of have just general um, foods that I prep up on Sunday and then I tend to throw them all together into big, um, into big meals altogether. I think it's useful to just kind of start first 
with thinking about the individual meals and trying to just make your, um, to try to make um, each week, but eventually you'll realize, oh, you know what? I do have all these carrot recipes or these three or four different chicken recipes and I can bunch them together. When you feel like you're in a rut, that's when probably the easiest thing that you can do is to buy some new spice blends. Um, often it's not that the ingredients, like the main parts of our food have to change that much because you know there's only so many meats in the world. We're gonna eat chicken more than once. But if we change how we're actually dressing them, how we're preparing them, they can feel super different. So even if you are, um, I'll use the example of chickpeas, because I eat a lot of chickpeas. Um, well, the first night, I'm gonna put on some Indian spices and curry spices. Uh, the second night, I'm going to mash them up into a hummus and make um, collard wraps. The third night, I'm going to roast the chickpeas, like really, so they get nice and crispy, and put them on top of a carrot soup. Fourth night, I'm going to do them uh, Italian style, uh, maybe in a tomato soup. And then the fifth night, I'll do um, a bean dip that's gonna go on tacos. So now I've had chickpeas five nights in a row, but man, was it different all five nights. Now, some of that helps because chickpeas are a miracle food, so it's very easy to come up with different things. But similarly with chicken, again, one night you can um, cut it all on up really easy. Um, and put it into a salad, so kind of like a chicken salad. Sometimes you can bake it, sometimes you can sear it and stuff it. Um, so, so starting to think about different spices and different ways to prepare that same ingredient can really help you. And sometimes it's as easy as adding a different spice blend. Easing into a plant-based diet, and how would I recommend you go about doing that? That's a really, really great question. Um, I think, uh, I think there's a point of making sure that you're eating enough protein because sometimes we just feel unsatisfied with a plant-based diet and it's because we are not getting the same amount of calories. So making sure that you eat a lot of, of those chickpeas or, um, or, or those beans, those grains, um, and making sure you have enough vegetables so that you actually get yourself feeling full. Um, I start with one, one meal a day. So let's say you're currently eating meat at all of your lunches and dinners. Maybe you start to go towards a more vegetarian based lunch and so thinking about ways to use um, hummus. You know, you can definitely Google um, plant based recipes and the thing that can really help is to make it more specific. So, um, for example, look up vegetarian Indian co cooking or vegetarian um, Italian. So then you can start to un get an understanding of how people are using beans um, in different cultures and that can be really helpful to have a uh, a way of understanding how people are cooking and preparing these foods. So even though we're used to Italian with a bunch of chicken, well actually you can do the exact same thing, just get rid of the chicken and keep it with chickpeas um, or whatever else it is that are that's happening in these different cultures. Um, it's definitely one that will differ for people, for everyone, so definitely um, it's something I definitely talk about with clients and, and we really figure out, okay, what are those easy switches that we can make in your diet right now? It's awesome to be here with you guys. So a couple ways to keep up with me. You can find me on Snapchat where you can always see me cooking recipes like that kale recipe that Heather mentioned earlier, um, getting my thoughts on yoga, nutrition, and just life as well as some pretty spring scenes from Washington, D.C. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at Happy Healthy Sam. Please join our Facebook group. It's called Happy Healthy Humans. That is the best place to go. And the next one, most important one, is always please send me a note because I am happy to work with you lovely individuals over Skype and video, whether it's yoga as well as um, nutrition and wellness. So would love to work with you guys, even if you're not local to DC. Um, send me a note if you'd like me to um, chat with you more about how we could work together. You can send me a note at sam at behappyhealthyhuman.com, sam at behappyhealthyhuman.com, or just send me a quick message on Twitter. I'll find it, I'll send you a note um, with your email address. So happy healthy Sam is the way to do it. Thank you guys so much for being an awesome, beautiful, wonderful community. I will see you guys very, very soon.